Our recharge uh, tonight is going to be the next demand uh, from Jesus, and that is Jesus demands that we pray, okay? And this was an important lesson for us to hear tonight. The demand, Jesus continually teaches us that we would pray and that we would not lose heart. Listen to this, Luke 18, verse 1. Now, he's telling them a parable to show that at all times, right, they ought to pray and not lose heart. And then he goes on to tell uh, the parable of the persistent widow. Here's another one, John chapter 5, uh, verse 14. <clears throat> this is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us and whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked from him. We know that. Pray with confidence. Jesus, again, in John 15, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you would bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Does this stir you up, believer, in a way that says, Jesus is always compelling me. He's always asking me to pray and to really trust and to really believe Okay? In fact, he commands it of you. So let's walk through this real quickly in our short time here. First of all, why does Jesus command that we pray? The first thing we would say is he, uh, the why is for the glory of God. Okay? Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Okay? God is the hero of the story. He is the hero. And there is a position in prayer where we are acknowledging our dependence upon him and he swoops in as the superhero and saves the day. And that glorifies him because it acknowledges that he has the resources and he has the capabilities and we know that he is our ultimate source and our hope, okay? So the first thing, right? Jesus says, pray. And, and to work through this theologically, know this, because it glorifies God the Father. So you can have a confidence when you pray, that God is going to be glorified in the way that he answers. All right, secondly, why do we pray? Because it is for our joy. So they're not, uh, they're, they're not against each other. They're not exclusive. God's glory and our joy. John 16, verse 24. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, so that your joy may be made full. Your joy may be made full. The scripture is full. Jesus presses the, the analogy of a father and a son. He says, listen, which of you, as a caring parent, does not wish to give good gifts to their child. If your child asks for bread, are any of you going to trick him and give him stones? Okay. Are you going to trick him and give him moldy bread? No. You love to give good gifts, right? And you love to see your children delight in that. Okay. It's like, it's like Christmas time or birthday time. The parents have just as much joy as the kids do. Why? Because you want to see your children, your grandchildren delight in the good gift. That's exactly what Jesus says here. So one, we pray for the glory of God, OK? 
okay? God will be glorified. But two, it is not exclusive. That it is also for our joy. All right, let's quickly move on. How? How should we pray? Jesus gives us a number of instructions here. But first, let's state this. We are to pray with simplicity, with simplicity. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. See, we are to reject the idea that using... uh, well, that, that God has to be aroused to our petition with our many words. As if God is unwilling, but we are the persuasive holy ones with our much repetition. This is e- exactly what he is addressing. Because we, we've already said from the first two things, God doesn't need to be petitioned as if he doesn't care. This is the way the Gentiles uh, pray to God. They think, oh, maybe your God's asleep, or maybe he doesn't care right now, or maybe he's distracted. Maybe he needs to be persuaded. In a, maybe you need to strong arm him and let him know how serious you are. And so use meaningless repetition. Use lots of words, and then he'll know how serious you are. And Jesus is like, listen, that's not your heavenly father, okay? He will move for his glory, and he will do it ultimately for your joy, all right? And he, he doesn't need to be aroused for any sort of, he, he doesn't need to be woken up or persuaded in that regard. So number one, with simplicity. But number two, carefully, this does not mean that there is not perseverance in prayer, okay? Jesus teaches, and you can see these he has these two parables here. One I reference, uh, well, no, in Luke 11, 5 through 8, and in Luke 18, there's the persistent widow, and then there's the other one where you, you wake up in the middle of the night and you go and you ask your neighbor for bread. And, and here at the end of Luke 11, when you're asking your neighbor for bread, verse 8, it says, I tell you, even though he will not give up and give you anything because he's your friend, yet because of, of his persistence, he will get up, right? Because you're persistent in the middle of the night, and it's kind of annoying, okay? You'll get up and give your, uh, you'll give your neighbor uh, what they need. But, and then, and then uh, Jesus immediately pivots, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Here's the point. The point is simply this. God, God is not, uh, he does not give in to you because uh, you finally woke him up or he finds you annoying, no, no, no. The, the point, though there is persistence in prayer, okay, you are not breaking God's resistance, but rather, when we are persistent in prayer, it is a time for us to discover God's wisdom and God's way and God's timing that the prayer should be answered. It is, it is a chance for us to say, God, you know better, okay? You know when and you know how you should answer this. Therefore, persistence is a display in our confidence that he hears us, that he is our hope, and that we trust him. We trust his timing, we trust his way. That's why persistence is called for. It is not to wear him down, okay? But rather, it is your continual belief and faith in him. God, I trust you, and God, I trust your timing, and I know you know better, and that is shown through persistence. Next, Jesus teaches us to pray in his name, in the name of Jesus. That is not a tack on to the end of prayer. That's not magic words at the end of prayer that are like hocus pocus alakazam, now it must be done because I said in Jesus' name, okay? In Jesus' name for the Christian 
is the, is the understanding, I only come before the holy king of the universe because of the blood of Christ, okay? But also, I get to come. And in fact, I must come. He bids me come because of, because of the Son, right? I am in the Son. So it's, it's, it's a declaration, right? His blood makes me righteous, and he bids me to come. Remember that as you pray, right? Because we tack it on so quickly as if it means nothing. It means everything, okay? So pray in Jesus' name. Next, pray with faith. Pray with faith. And all things that you ask in prayer, believing that you will receive, okay? Pray with faith. Now, this does not mean the power of positive thinking. This often gets hijacked, okay, that says, I, I, will, uh, I will pray and then I will just believe it and I will believe it. That is actually faith in our faith, okay? So when Jesus teaches us to pray in faith and to believe it, first of all, um, we are to pray according to God's will, okay? We must pray according to God's will. We, we read that verse earlier in, in 1 John 5, 14, um, and that is when you ask anything according to the Lord's will, James uh, 4, 3 says, you ask but you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives, okay? So we pray according to the will of God, okay? But it is... Uh, to pray with faith. Um, in John 15, 7, I'm sorry, I forgot this on the slide. It, it's way back at the beginning. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, okay, then, then ask whatever you wish. So he's putting framework on what it means to have faith, okay? And that is, it's the trust that he is the all-supplying vine, okay? And that that when we ask, it, it goes back to where we were before. All right, God, I'm going to be persistent and I'm going to continue to believe what we've said so far. That is who you are. You're my father. That is, you are, you are going to answer this prayer for your glory. You are going to answer this prayer for my joy. Okay? I believe that and I trust that. And I'm going to be persistent in it. This is what it means to have faith when you pray. And I'm going to pray according to your will. And here's the incredible thing, that the Spirit of God inside of you can begin to decipher and discern the will of God according to his word, but can show you, I want you to pray this way, and can lead you to pray that way. And as you're consistent in your prayer, as you're consistently believing, that's exactly the way Jesus wants you to pray in faith. Next, Jesus gives us a warning. Do not pray for the praise of men, right? When you pray, you're not to be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues on the street corners so that they may be seen by men. Truly, I tell you, they already have their reward in full because their reward was the approval of men. And Jesus goes on to say, listen, you, you, we actually need to guard against that. That's the religious community that, that can be so worried about what other, I hope other people think I'm holy enough. We have to guard against that in our prayers, not to be praying for other people's approval. So go in your closet and pray to your heavenly father who sees and knows, right? And it doesn't mean we can't pray publicly or those sorts of things. It's just a constant guard. We do not pray for the approval of men. Now, for whom do we pray? Well, we pray for ourselves, first and foremost. We pray for ourselves. We pray for our loved ones. We pray for um, the church. Scripture tells us to pray for one another. 
That would be in the local, near context, but as well as your brothers and sisters around the world. We're even told we pray for kings and rulers. In other words, we we pray for everyone, right? Everyone who does not know the glory of God. That's who we pray for. And you have a sphere of influence and you have uh, people that are near and dear to you. Um, and, and certainly it is good and it is right for you to, play, to pray in those circles. And then Jesus tells us, pray then in this way. The Lord's Prayer. All right, and here's how we're gonna close. So what should we pray? And Jesus gives us a template. In a 30 second crash course, The first three things in the Lord's Prayer are vertical, okay? That is, we're praying that God's name would be set apart because there is no one else like him. And we pray that his kingdom would come, and then we're surrendering, your will be done. And then the next three parts, we pray for our own daily provision. We pray for, we confess and repent sins. So we pray for our own forgiveness, and then we forgive others. And then we pray that as we're led throughout the day, that the Lord would would go before us and protect us, especially from the enemy who wishes to harm us. Now, probably most of us in this room have memorized that prayer. Again, prayers are not a mantra that are just repeated. Um, it's, It's a template for you to unfold in your prayer time and as you pray for people. But... We have, I'm over time, nonetheless. Let's pray together collectively. We're gonna say the Lord's Prayer together. Then we'll be done, okay? But let's think through what we've just articulated. Jesus' demand that we must pray and not lose heart in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and glory forever. Amen. All right, God bless you guys. Our classes will start promptly.